Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our engine opening series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're taking a look, another look at the Cobra Sicilian part two. Uh, here we're going to take a look at a number of uh, other lines that were mentioned in the comments to the original uh, YouTube video and also some other lines that I'd looked at but that didn't fit into the first one. So let's have a look. The Cobra Sicilian, what is that again? Well, that starts uh, E4, C5, Knight F3, E6, D4 takes takes, Knight C6, Knight C3, Knight F6, Knight DB5, and then Bishop C5, an idea of uh, I am Rolf Martins. Um, so Bishop F4 is the, uh, the main line and uh, the line that we looked at in the previous video. Castles, Bishop c7, Queen e7, Bishop d6. Very clever way of um, uh, exchanging off the dark squared bishops with tempo um, after Bishop d6, Queen d6. White's threatening to exchange off queens and just have a, a very nice position with uh, black's weak uh, dark squares, queens off, no counterplay for black. So black plays this uh, very unusual move, Queen d8. And now this is where the um, the extra possibilities start. Um, castles is um, what uh, we looked at last time. And, uh, well, we're going to have a look at uh, a few extra variations in there. But um, in the comments to the video, we had uh, two comments. First of all, from Mr. Pizza, who uh, mentioned the idea that was actually played by Jan Nepomniachtchi twice, which was the immediate H4. Very logical idea, in actual fact. Um, we saw H4 um, in the... Uh, uh, the previous line actually after castles, um, a6, knight d4, knight e7, now h4. And this was also the move that was played in uh, the Vasti match, um, where um, um, Gwilym Price, who we'll talk about later, uh, got this with, uh, with black uh, in, that, uh, in that match. But um, h4 then um, is a very interesting idea. It tries to save time on queenside castling and move that h pawn up the board. Now, I had the idea simply that queen b6 was uh, a very simple way to play against it. Black threatening to play uh, a7 to a6, attacking the knight. The b2 pawn is hanging, and if you castle queenside, black can just uh, take on f2. I mean, white can always claim compensation in these positions because you've got that queen on d6, and uh, black's not so well developed. But in general, you know, it's not, uh, it's not enough. Um, the engines just want to play the move queen d2. Uh, instead um, but after d5 uh, from black just getting uh, black free castles rookie eight was uh, what the engines want you know black's got decent compensation an isolated uh, queen's pawn it must be said but um, but well there's counterplay against the f2 pawn all black's pieces are active it's it's pretty fine for black uh, but mr pizza uh, suggested the move um, h5 and it's a very interesting idea um, in actual fact um, you know well, black can play um, h6, that's not too bad. But what the engines want, they want the sharpest line, which is to play a6, hitting that knight on b5. Obviously, the b2 pawn behind it is quite weak. Um, h6 and now g6. Don't, uh, don't uh, sacrifice the... the uh, don't grab the, uh, the offered piece, just uh, come back here. Queen f4. And uh, this was what uh, Mr. Pizza mentioned, but uh, now black plays knight e8. And actually... Yeah, it, it's kind of tough for um, for white because this uh, this uh, this pressure against the knight on b5 and the pawn on b2 behind it is quite awkward. As, I mean, the, the engines managed to keep it afloat with uh, knight a4, knight bc3, but it is quite awkward. Um, e5, queen e3, and now various ideas. For example, knight uh, d4, castles, and b5 is quite dangerous with the idea of meeting uh, knight c5 with just b4. Um, actually, in this position, white was playing uh, b4, queen b4, and knight b6. And, um, you know, even though uh, the engines managed to keep this afloat somehow, it does feel quite, uh, you know, does feel really very, very fraught for uh, for white. And you need to be a, an engine-style genius, I think, to keep it uh, afloat. So, yeah, interesting idea, h4. You know, uh, definitely, I think, worth a punt in a in a blitz or rapid game, which is what um, Jan Nepomni actually did. But um, yeah, if black's properly prepared, then uh, probably not quite good enough. Um, another line that uh, was mentioned by Gwilym Price actually in the comments. So thanks uh, very much, Gwilym, for uh, for dropping in on that. Uh, Gwilym, uh, well, Gwilym's games actually, and uh, the game he played in the Varsity match was kind of the inspiration for uh, for this video series. Um, uh, he mentioned the idea knight c7 
which is uh, definitely tricky. And uh, well, it was quite interesting getting the engines to, to have a look at this and to see what, um, what should be played. Um, I mean, there's two main possibilities here for black, rook b8 and knight e8. What was interesting was that the engines absolutely hated knight e8. Um, so after takes takes, what they wanted to do was play this move bishop b5. And uh, actually, you know, white's just going to look to play bishop takes c6 and castle queenside and just leave black with this um, horrible um, bishop on c8. So, um, yeah, what the engines do, they play uh, something like knight e7 or knight a5, bishop b2 and a6, castles b5, a3, again, just uh, anticipating b4, knight c6. But this is basically pretty nice for um, for white. I mean, um, we've got the pressure against the um, uh, the d7 pawn, you know, which um, which really means that uh, this bishop on c8 is uh, is tied in. And uh, yeah, white's got plenty of space, really. So um, uh, several ideas here. I mean, rook d2 was... Uh, uh, bishop b7 rook hd1 really just uh, lining up on that d7 pawn was um, was a nice idea and um, another idea from stockfish was just to play the move um, f4 just um, grab space like that rook b8 rook hf1 and um, yeah you know just kind of hard for black to get free eventually the uh, the engines were kind of playing uh, bishop b7 and uh, and sacrificing this pawn on d7 but yeah, you know, it's. Uh, I think it's it's definitely a very nice position for white. I wouldn't really be that keen on playing it as uh, as black. Um, so what the engines really like is um, is rook b8 in this position. And uh, well, now um, yeah, white has to make a choice. Uh, the main choice um, has been bishop e2. Um, there's other moves in there, and well, I'll put the PGN up again as uh, as I did for the first uh, line, so uh, you don't need to worry about uh, me covering all of the lines. Uh, there's uh, plenty also in the PGN, but bishop e2 is the idea. Uh, actually, just uh, looking to play e5 without allowing knight g4, because um, if you go e5, uh, well, knight g4 basically just uh, just wins a pawn for black, because uh, f4, knight e3 is rather uncomfortable. I mean, we're threatening knight c2. And we're also threatening moves like, for example, knight f5, when the, the queen can't hold the uh, the knight on c7. So um, um, bishop b2, and uh, now black plays b5. Actually, quite interestingly, uh, um, dragon actually doesn't want to play bishop b2, just wants to play a4 to stop b6. It's a very rare move. It's only been played three times in human chess. So maybe, you know, worth investigating there if you're, uh, if you're a white player. We'll certainly keep, uh, get, you know, take the, the black players by surprise there. But bishop b2 is the main line and now b5 from black. And um, yeah, this pawn sacrifice is, um, is quite nice. Um, a bit hard for, um, for white to take it really. If you go knight uh, takes b5, then um, you just go a6 and uh, the rook will just take on b2 uh, behind it. Um, so what white tends to do is to play e5. And now again, you know, it's, um, it's, you know, again, with engines, it's always fascinating because uh, I think, you know, human players, we, we do tend to go just in one direction at a time. If we start hitting, we keep on hitting. Uh, if we play quiet, we keep on playing quietly. Whereas the, I always feel that also in attacks, especially, you know, engines have a much better sense and grip, really, of, um, um, of when to attack and when not. And, um, well, one very sharp idea is to play a B4 here. And the engines absolutely hate this. It feels so natural. You played this bold uh, B5 pawn sacrifice, keep on going. But um, um, yeah, there seems to be a little bit too much according to the engines. FG, King G7, and now not this move, Queen G3 check, which has been played a lot, but um, the engines aren't a fan of it. But simply B3. Um, and... Um, yeah, it just turns out to be a little bit tough for black to, to really get something going. After queen g5, which is the main move, um, h4 is played. And uh, actually the engines felt that they just needed to, to give back the pawn there. But, you know, black's got a, a little bit of play. Um, this knight on c7 is a little bit awkward. So, um, you know, white's going to have to bring it back through the byways. So uh, uh, that's definitely going to give black some play. But in general, you know, white's just a pawn up. And, um, uh, well, I mean, there were some draws and some wins for white, really. But in general, you know, pretty comfortable for, uh, for white. And um, yeah, there were some more ideas. Uh, Queen f6, for example, or rook g8 um, was played by the engines. But basically, it just always ended up looking quite nice for, um, for white. So what the engines want to do here is just to play nice and calmly, knight e8. 
And after knight takes c8, actually here, <laughs> here we can uh, we can do a number of things. Uh, strange enough, it, it sort of seems to transpose into each other, um, you know, more often than not. It doesn't have to, but uh, that seems to be mainly. You've got a, the option of rook e8, but um, I think you have to be quite creative to also realise that uh, that b4 is an option. Just um, uh, you know, just inserting this one uh, in, into the uh, the position. I mean, Stockfish proposes it. Um, um, you know, I think once out of three games somehow is the main move. So it must be really close to the top move as well. And I think Leela was keen on it as well. Um, we'll have a look at rookie eight. That's the main move. Um, but um, you'll bear it. You'll see uh, that basically it very often transposes here. Uh, the key point is is that bishop b5. I just go queen a5 here. Bishop c6. And now the key into mezzo. Rook takes b2 here. Um, and uh, well, we're undermining the support of this knight on c3. So queen takes c3 is uh, quite a nice idea. And uh, black's just doing very nicely. Um, yeah, maybe a little edge for black. Nothing huge, but uh, black's definitely not worse in this position. So castle queenside has played b4, knight e4, and now various ideas, um, uh, a lot of ideas have been played in human games, queen a5, rook b6 as well, and none of them are bad, but the engines like this, uh, this idea very much, which is just to go bishop b7. And uh, the idea is actually to get to just put the bishop on a8, where it's nicely developed, you know, eyeing that diagonal, and out of the way, and then afterwards we're going to start uh, looking at this e5 uh, square, looking maybe to kick the um, the queen out with uh, rook b6, or just to get the knight uh, into play, knight e7 to f5 or to d5. Um, lots of variations here. Um, the main line uh, that was played in my engine games was bishop d3, um, bishop a8, and now this move, uh, queen c5. You know, the queen just um, um, uh, getting out of the way, ready to allow the um, the knight to get into d6. And then black was normally exchanging off queens, either queen b6 or queen a5. You know, this was... Uh, queen a5 was dragon's choice uh, a number of times. Queen b6, also a choice. And, um, I mean, I think, you know, with, with black, you've just got to be a little bit prepared for, uh, for these end games. Looks like a little edge for white, but in principle, actually, in the engine games, it was just looking trivial, you know... Um, Black was just holding this without any problems at all, and now we're going d6. I think, you know, if you're going to play this, um, I think it's a very good option, but uh, it probably would need just a little bit of preparation with black just to be ready for uh, for all the end games. Definitely something where it's useful to play out some games against an engine, because uh, when you're playing, when you when you see the engine games, um, you know, even that a lot of that experience, that gives you some great ideas, but when you're playing it yourself, you know, often it feels um, a little bit less um, less interesting. Um, plenty of ideas as well. I mean, you know, if white plays something like b3, for example, then black isn't just going for the queen exchange, can go knight e7 and knight d5. And we've got ideas like, you know, rook b6 and uh, maybe rook f8 and f5 and maybe the queen can come out to h4. You know, there, there's uh, definite potential for attacking ideas in there as well. So, yeah, I mean, I, I rather... I rather like this uh, this variation, and you know the, the nice thing about it is is that um, you know if you've got a game where you say, "Well, I really need to win," well, okay, you don't go for a line where you exchange off queens. You can play a move like queen a5, for example, and rook b6, and uh, well, it's a little bit sharper somehow. You know, I mean, uh, there's all sorts of things for for white to wonder about as well. So um, yeah, I mean, I I like this line somehow, and uh, um, this seemed to be working out pretty well for black with rook b8, and then that just that little mix of um, of aggressive b5, um, and then you know just a restrained knight e8. You know, I think that was the uh, you just sort of get that mix right um, of a mix of aggression and uh, and calm play, and uh, and you're doing pretty well. So. Looks like knight c7, definitely an, an interesting idea for white, but not, um, um, I think, not too scary for black in uh, in general. So castles was um, um, was uh, uh, was yeah the move played in the in the varsity match a6 knight d4 knight e7 and now h4 was played in the varsity match which I do think is is probably the best line. But there are a couple of other interesting ideas. Um, I mentioned uh, g4. And, um, you know, it's got that real Sicilian hacker's feel. You know, uh, if knight takes g4, we go queen g3 and we've got the open g file. Um, in actual fact, the engines thought that um, that this was all right for black. Um, but you've got to be a little bit careful because knight f6, we just go e5. And, um, you know, 
you sort of ask yourself, why do I go queen g3 to hit the, the knight rather than go rook g1? Well, the point is that after knight e8, you're no longer hitting the queen, so we've got time just for knight e4. And this is a gorgeous attacking uh, uh, structure for white. I mean, you don't want to do this as, uh, as black. So if you take this pawn, you have to go back to h6. And, um, yeah... I don't know. I mean, the engines, uh, you know, sort of thought that um, that this would be possible after f4. They were going queen h4, and they were playing this ending somehow. But I don't know. I mean, I, I find this very uncomfortable. I mean, this knight on h6, uh, undeveloped pieces everywhere. You know, it just really feels like like stuff could go a bit nasty here. You're going to have to be very accurate with uh, with um, with black, I think, to um, uh, to get a decent game from here. So definitely not the sort of line I'd um, I'd go for. Um, what black can do is simply go b5, and this is quite nice, I think. Um, so, um, uh, now, actually, now if you go a3, then the engines wanted to go uh, knight takes g4. That was quite uh, quite interesting. Um, you don't have to, but uh, seems like including b5 and a3 is going to be a bit better for black. Well, you can imagine the bishop can get out to b7. Um, and if you play the thematic g5, well... Here we sort of see the scenario that I've talked about in the other video that, you know, g4 to g5, normally very disruptive move in the um, in the Sicilian. I mean, the Keres Sicilian against the Skaveningen, g4, g5, that's the idea. And, you know, often engines giving very big advantages. But this position in the Sicilian is a bit peculiar because actually playing knight e8 is part of black's plan. So white forcing g5, you know, doesn't really, doesn't hurt black at all. And, uh, well, you know, what are you doing after you've played g5? I mean, you're not going to play g6 very quickly. I mean, uh, fg or something, or knight g6. So you're still quite away from achieving something on the king's side. And meanwhile, black's just going to go carry on with b4, the key uh, move here. And it's, you know, white's already got to be a little bit careful here. Knight a4, it's always the move you want to play as white. But queen a5, b3, d6. And uh, well, black's very quick with bishop d7 takes a4 here. Um, and, um, well, for example, after bishop c4, um, we got uh, bishop c4, clicking wrongly there, bishop d7, takes, takes, and then uh, d5, for example, takes, knight, takes d5. You know, black's got a, um, a very decent game here. White's got a little bit more space, maybe a little bit more activity, but black's very solid, and we've got this, um, this uh, you know, weak uh, white queen side to aim at, so, you know, basically balanced chances. So, yeah, it seemed to me really that g4 is a nice idea, you know, a bit shocking maybe, you know, 10 black to take on g4, but probably not really that uh, that dangerous, you know. Um, in general terms, I much prefer, you know, moving the pawn up to h6, which, you know, in terms of starting up an attack, um, I think that's really something we've learned from Alpha Zero, that uh, using the rook's pawn is, is always the best way to start. It really is pretty much... Uh, you know, so um, so that's quite interesting. Um, now the other move that the engines were quite keen on, and uh, this was you know quite a major move, was a4. Only played four times in uh, in human games, and um, yeah, and Black's got a number of possibilities here. Um, um, you know, a number of human games went knight e8, queen b4, and then the move um, b6 here. And, um, yeah, this is quite interesting. It was played by Gratchev, very strong player. Lots of uh, creative ideas. Plays the London system a lot, but, uh, you know, finds some interesting ideas like in that, you know, just like uh, Gatakamsky always did in the, uh, in the London system. And, uh, yeah, plays a lot of unusual systems. Um, yeah, I mean, the human games went, um, went bishop e2, but um, um, the engines come up with bishop c4, which looks really odd. In You know, to me, I don't know, yeah, I suppose just these three pieces next to each other feels really odd, but it's got a, a real point, because um, if you go bishop b7, uh, just knight takes e6 wins on the spot here. Takes, bishop takes, king h8, rook takes d7, and um, um, obviously uh, uh, f takes e6, we can just go rook takes d8. Now there's a little cunning little thing in here because um, you know I, was, I only saw rook d8, queen e7. I thought that was that, but uh, Black's actually got this cunning idea: knight c6, trying to uh, you know pick up uh, uh, two pieces for the rook after rook a8, knight takes b4. Uh, but the engines were playing um, takes takes rook d1, knight f6, and then doing it like this basically. And uh, well, queen and three pawns for two rooks. It's it's way too much. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, White's just uh, clearly winning there. So, um, yeah, I mean, the um, I had a little look at Queen C7, which I thought was really cunning. 
um, you know, after queen e7, uh, there's queen takes c4 here. Um, unfortunately, the engines really don't like this position, and they just think rook e1, um, what's it, rook b8 they were looking at, and then uh, rook e3, and then they just keep control with knight f3, f4, something like f4, e5. Um, the engines just really liked um, white very much. It's a bit of a, a bit uh, sad, really, because uh, my really cunning idea was that if you play this move, bishop a6, with the idea of uh, bishop a6, queen e7, just picking up a pawn, then I had the very unusual idea, queen c5 here, um, uh, takes, takes, bishop c8, and c takes d4, haha, -ha, into mezzo attacking a piece. Bizarrely enough, I was actually seriously wondering whether whether this was um, this was something that that I should be happy about with black because you know these are uh, these are quite typical sicilian positions with three pawns against the piece um and actually the engines thought that white was still slightly better in this position but they thought that uh, queen takes c7 was 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 better than that um why did i want to play queen c7 well the idea is that after d6 white plays e5 just trying to blast things open and then after d5 we just um retreat the bishop and there's a couple of ideas i mean uh, bishop d3 was um was one set of games uh, queen c7 knight c e2 and then we're going to play f4 and it's a nice french steinitz french for white this i mean it really is a nice a nice variation the engines were holding it but they hold everything of course so you shouldn't uh and bishop b2 was another idea and this was another ending and again this is quite nice for white you know very nice in trench on the dark squares playing b3 and we're just going to expand on the king side as well this would not be my favourite ending to uh, to play simply. So I don't like this idea of uh, of b6 very much. Now I also analysed the move um, uh, rook b8. Um, got some quite a lot of stuff on that. That's a stockfish idea. Um, just aiming to play b5 um, seemed to be pretty decent. Um, I'll point out one idea because uh, bishop a6 was boom. What popped into my head. I'm, uh, I'm good with tactics like that, but actually this is not uh, anything uh, any good because this actually leads to a forced draw after e5. Um, quite a nice tactic actually, knight f3, knight c6, I go queen c4, very cunning because if b takes uh, a6 I've got queen c6, dc and then rook d8, which is quite nice. But black just plays knight a5 and we just end up repeating moves like this, very nice uh, draw here really. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, maybe we go h4 and then b5. Um, look quite interesting, but somehow, you know, I, I didn't feel it as much as the line that Dragon uh, preferred and also Leela preferred as well, which was just to go b5 immediately. I mean, if I'm going to open, I'm going to sacrifice the, the b pawn. It's nice to have the rook on the a file, which is going to be open rather than the b file. That's what it seems like uh, to me. And um, yeah, I had quite a few games with uh, with Leela at one node um, in this variation. And uh, well, you know, for what it's worth, um, I don't particularly like this with white. Um, the engines do see a slight advantage for uh, for white, um, but I felt very uncomfortable. Um, you know, I really, um, yeah, I, I really had the feeling that um, the black had a lot of counterplay, and uh, even Leela playing at one node, um, you know, gave me some, um, some gave me a hard time in uh, in some games. Also managed to trick Leela quite nicely, which I'm going to show you. But um, in general, I, I'd say that um, um, I, I would rather be black in this position than uh, than white. Um, so Bishop B7, um, 98 has been played as well, but. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, again, I think it's one of those themes, really. I think that uh, I sort of feel, you know, looking at the opening now for quite a bit, that um, I'd rather delay 98 longer rather than um, uh, than play it sooner, you know. And, uh, um, and yeah, bishop b7 feels quite nice. f3 and then knight c8. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't too thrilled about this development uh, in the other video, but when you sacrifice the pawn on b5, this knight, you know, can come out to a7, for example, or can come out to b6 uh, later. So it's actually not doing a bad job at all from c8. So I quite prefer that to playing knight e8 somehow. Um, now I've got a couple of ideas. We've got queen c5 and queen b4. Um, what I got a little bit upset about after queen b4, queen c7, when I was playing against Leela, um, was that this queen was always coming out to f4 check. And it somehow feels, 
the idea of this sort of pincer movement, you know, rook a1 check, queen a queen f4 was making me feel very uncomfortable. Now, you know, there's uh, many lines here. B3 is uh, is probably the best for uh, for white. That was the uh, the engine move. Um, and um, yeah, black plays d5, and uh, yeah, I don't know. E takes d5, knight d5 takes takes. Um, you know, yeah, the, the, the knight's coming out, the rook's coming over to b8. I, I really, I think you need to be, you know, machine-like accurate to, you know, to get a, a slight edge out of this with white. And uh, yeah, I'm not too happy with it. Um, I did have some nice cunning ideas. I mean, bishop d3 was um, was the idea I came up with. And, um, uh, oh, sorry, no, I did it slightly differently because uh, I didn't quite believe the idea. So knight b3, d5 and bishop d3. Oh, bishop d3, sorry. Uh, that was the idea that I came up with, and the idea was incredibly cunning. Um, I saw it from uh, from a distance, of course. But Black plays um, Bishop c6, and then I take on d5. Knight takes d5. Maybe you can start seeing what's coming. Takes takes, and now Bishop h7 check. That was my cunning thought uh, with this idea. And uh, well, King takes. I can't go Queen takes f8, obviously, because there's Knight d6 trapping the Queen. But I thought that I would have. Um, the move. Um, um, oh, there's uh, actually there's. Uh, sorry, my engine's telling me as well. There's bishop takes b3. Rather, my notes are telling me that. But I can also play rook takes d5, which I was assuming might be quite promising for me because uh, yeah, there's no knight d6, of course, trapping the queen. But actually, when I looked at it a little bit closer, knight b6, queen b4, knight c4 looked absolutely horrible for white. Um, and uh, well, the engines can hold it, but um, I mean, I'm not. Yeah, you, you just can't play like this seriously as white. So that um, beautiful tactical idea did not work out for me. So to be honest, the line that I liked the most for white was to play the move queen c5. Um, the point is that black normally plays d6 and then we go queen queen b4. And well, this move d6, I don't think it's incredibly useful for black, but we have blocked access to this diagonal. And after queen c7, um, well, as you'll see, the engines recommend bishop a4 which is quite a, um, a nice idea. Um, I actually, you know, I was thinking about this playing against Leela One Node, and um, uh, you know, what I really thought was, wouldn't it be great if I could um, somehow break up this um, this um, this feeling of black initiative, you know, on the open uh, A, B, and C files, and actually just sack a piece for a few pawns, force the exchange of queens, and just then just play, you know, some sort of uh, uh, three pawns against piece ending with this, you know, this lovely. Uh, central pawn structure which is blocking out this bishop on b7 so i had a few ideas like that um and uh my first idea was um i played bishop c4 um so obviously teeing up for um for e6 and then after d5 i had a couple of ideas my first one did not work out well i will confess to that e takes d5 knight b6 well actually knight d6 is even stronger um, according to the engines. Knight b6 was Leela's choice. Um, and then d6, and then we got um, queen takes c4 here. Queen b6. Um, oh, sorry, no, Leela played um, rook a1 check, which also felt quite reasonable. Knight b1, queen c4, queen b6, queen a2. And I didn't play this well, in all fairness. Um, king d2. Leela played queen d5, which surprised me. And, uh, um, well, I mean, you know, Leela's playing uh, instantly. I I'm playing blitz too, and... Uh, um, I didn't really think this through because I, I whipped out knight c3 and uh, I completely missed that queen g5 check is happening. And uh, I'm in an awful bind now. Um, <laughs> I tried king d3, bishop a6, knight cb5, but um, uh, knight d5 was uh, was just totally horrific. Um, uh, queen e3 check is coming in and uh, it's just uh, totally, totally awful for me. So that was a bit sad against uh, Leela 1. No, I'm sure that if... Uh, uh, Mr. Beads, Leela's greatest fan, is watching this. He will be dancing in the streets of Helsinki. Um, uh, although it's maybe a little bit cold to uh, to take his T-shirt off to do that. But um, uh, what I did uh, f uh, do in the next game, I had a I unleashed my second cunning idea, which was to go Bishop B3, and I thought this would be quite interesting because I thought if Knight B6, I go E5. Obviously, if you take, I take on uh, B6. And uh, after knight fd7, I can go something like f4. Engines were not too convinced with uh, with this idea, so probably not a very good idea. But the key idea was if d takes e4, um, I go knight takes e6, which is actually winning on the spot. f takes e6, bishop takes e6 check. 
Now King H8 allows uh, Queen F8. Um, and um, uh, black played rook f7 and now to my great shame um, I did I missed my first chance at immortality because I played the move king b1 but after Leela played e takes f3 um, I seized my chance for immortality queen b7 which could have been played uh, before um, and uh, the great idea is that after queen a5 I go rook d8 check which is going to be mate and the even nicer idea is that after queen a5 I go queen a8 ha ha with the same trick and uh, basically, I just took all of Leela's pieces and uh, delivered mate. So that was a cunning idea, bishop c4, but probably not um, not, not so good. Um, another idea that I had on a similar vein was to play the move queen c4. Um, and after queen b8, um, to go... Um, yeah, I, here I, I didn't quite get it right somehow. I, I didn't spot that I could go play this move queen b3. Um, but it was actually fitting in quite nicely to what I had in mind. Um, I was looking, you know, actually at, um, uh, at sacking on e6 immediately. But uh, Leela, uh, I think, was it Leela? I think it was Leela. Oops, sorry. Leela points out the move, the idea, queen b3, just a subtle one. And then knight b6, and now knight takes c6, which I thought was quite nice. And queen takes d6. But queen a7, you know, I mean, black's got a lot of counterplay here. I mean, queen a3 was, uh, was the engine line, which is about equal, apparently. But I've lost my big queenside mass really so you know i'm i'm, I'm not i'm probably going to make a draw here as white but uh, it's not it's not what i had in mind really you know i wanted to have a big queenside pawn mass against the um uh, the black pieces there so yeah i mean bishop a4 was the engine move and now um uh, this was the main line bishop a6 rook e1 rook b8 queen a3 rook e8 bishop b3 knight e7 and now the engines are taking on e6 and taking on d6 and this is a bit more like it but still there's a lot of counterplay for uh for black here you know i mean um so um well you can play through the rest of the lines i mean it was quite fraught um white ended up a pawn up uh and then it ended up being a draw as often happens in engine games but it you know it yeah i don't know it did just didn't feel like the sort of position i i could really um hope to play well on instinct with white and well you know gradually i think um as time has gone by i've got more and more wary of positions that i can't play on instinct because um uh yeah unless you're willing to learn an awful lot of concrete variations it can be hard to play this as white so yeah i would say 13a4 very interesting um if you can put the the big effort in to learn you know a lot of concrete variations might uh, be able to uh, to cause some damage but um if um you know if you want to if you also want to have a life next to uh, to learning all your chess, then uh, I think you know a move like h4 is um, is uh, is is really uh, you know the way to go. And then you know some of the novelties that we looked at in the uh, in the previous video could be quite interesting. Um, so there we are. I mean that was um, um, I guess uh, our, our last little look at um, um, at um, at this variation just from a theoretical point of view. Um, yeah, I think, you know, black seems to be doing quite well, really. Um, yeah, H4, mentioned by Mr. Pizza, very interesting. Thanks very much for those comments, by the way. Always really appreciate them. Um, that was uh, interesting, but I think fine for black, pretty fine for black. Knight C7, mentioned by Gwillem. Um, definitely a, a serious line, but I think that the engines are, are holding that one quite nicely. And uh, yeah, this castle's G4 nice idea but i don't think it's really getting to the heart of the matter and um a4 obviously quite critical but i think harder for white to play than uh, than black so um definitely um i think you know if i was recommending something i'd say either knight c7 in this position or um um not a4 but um but h4 um and after b5 either h5 you know which we saw some interesting stuff in or the, the main engine line knight b3 as well which is uh you know quite interesting and was seen in the the varsity match between uh, aluvalia and um and uh and Gwillem price okay i hope you enjoyed that theoretical survey i'm going to put the uh, the pgn up as well so you can uh, enjoy that as well um and uh otherwise you know if you enjoyed the video why not give a like subscribe to the channel take a look at my new book and also Chessable Course, The Silicon Road to Chess Improvement. And otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching and hope to see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.